If you're having trouble aiming out of a tree stand, try hunting out of a blind. If you want kids to hunt with you and have a good time, try hunting out of a blind. If you aren't just concerned with big bucks, but instead you're concerned with just enjoying the outdoors, seeing some deer and getting a shot on something, try hunting out of a blind. And if you haven't done it before, try hunting out of a blind. <laughs> That's what this video is all about. All right, behind me here, you see the 100-year-old apple tree and all of its splendor, all of its struggles. <laughs> you also see the blind that I have set up 25 yards on the nose from that apple tree. This is a video with some tips about how to hunt out of a blind. If you're going to hunt out of a blind, a couple things you want to do, you want to start by setting that blind up a month or so in advance, a little bit longer if need be. You don't need to leave it up all year long. In fact, that's probably a bad idea. It won't last as long if you do. Setting it up a little bit in advance, however, does give it a chance to air out. It gets rid of that rubber latex smell and it'll make the deer a little more comfortable with it. The animals will feel a little more comfortable around it. I leave the window open as well on the front end, the one I'm going to be shooting out of, so the deer get used to seeing that big black eye staring at them in advance of the hunting season. I think there's something to be said about big bucks not liking blinds and being a little bit scared of them, a little bit nervous around them. But I do have pictures of a really nice buck walking through here. In fact, I think he became the big guy eventually, years and years ago. And that deer walked right through here on a day when I wasn't hunting during the crossbow season, walked through here checking out the apples right in front of the blind. I know it's a little bit embarrassing. That blind was not brushed in at all, looked terrible. But I really don't know the value of brushing in the blind. I'm not sold on that, and here's why. Now, part of it's just laziness. I don't like the idea of going out and spending an afternoon cutting a whole bunch of trees and piling stuff up on top of the blind. Deer are in that section of woods all the time. They're down there in that area. They're down here. They see this area all the time. If there's a blind here with a big pile of wood around it, in my opinion, I think they're going to be just as nervous about that as they are this blind. Like, it's just a big pile of wood around a blind. I mean, it's the same thing. It just looks different to us. I think that's more to sell human beings on it than us. I Rather than do that, and I'm going to do another video on this to give you some tips about hunting from the ground, but rather than brush this in, I have had success here year after year hunting here. Every other year, this apple tree back here drops apples, and it's quite possible this is the last year. I've done another video about that and touched on that in another video, but this blind, year after year, I've had success just hunting out of this as it is, just setting it up, looking over that apple tree. The bait that is produced by that apple tree is so powerful that the deer are going to tolerate this and come in. And this is designed for me. My hunting plan, my strategy here is for does. This is not for bucks. If a buck comes in here, and I've had, I've had one or two in the distance and had some nice pictures here, but if a buck were to come in here, yeah, I'll take the shot. But really, this is my early season while the apples are still dropping. This is my early season access to does. That's what it is. Fill those doe tags, fill the freezer with this blind. So it all depends on your hunting strategy. Brushing this in would require me to cut a whole bunch of trees, put them on here, because you want live trees with leaves and branches and everything else. And you want to mix it in like that. You can build a tripod up if you want, like a teepee style thing, rope it all together, put branches all over it. But then it just looks like a big old mass of trees, a big old pile of brush. And it, it's a big old pile of brush that was not here until I put it there. And the deer are going to notice that and going to be a little suspicious. Now, this is more man-made. I get that. But I don't think it's completely, I don't think brushing it in would re completely remove their suspicion, if that makes any sense. And I guess that's where I'm going with it. Plus, I'm a little bit lazy doing all that work and cutting those trees. I just don't want to cut a whole bunch of stuff solely for that purpose. So I'm not going to do that. Before I talk about the specifics of hunting out of a blind and give you specific tips, one thing to keep in mind is legality. In spring gobbler, you cannot brush in your blind here in Pennsylvania. It has to be a blind made totally out of man-made materials like this one. But for deer, we are allowed to build a blind out of natural materials. In other words, I could come down here and build a blind just out of dead trees, branches, that sort of thing. And in fact, I am going to do that down in the woods, uh, down farther down the woods. 
for, that'll be my buck hunting blind, right? My buck strategy will be down there for Pennsylvania. That's what I'm going to be doing. So you'll get a chance to see that too. That's going to be the next video. I'm actually going to work on that tomorrow. But when we get that all up and running, I'll show you that. This is totally legal for here. And so is that. That is legal under Pennsylvania law. There are some safety reasons why you have to use a man-made blind for spring gobbler. So just keep that in mind. And it might be, you got to check the local regulations where you are. Sometimes you can hunt up a blind. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's got to be a specific type of blind. Sometimes it might have to have fluorescent orange on top of it. It depends. It depends on where and when you're hunting. So make sure you check your local regulations. Now, where do we set up our blind? And it's gonna vary depending on where you're at and what you're hunting for. Here, I'm hunting for deer. The apple tree is that way. It's behind me here. And because the apple tree, the apple tree's right out here. And because the apple tree's out in front of me, I'm obviously gonna set the blind up facing that way with the window open that way. Very easy to do, not a big deal. The other thing to keep in mind where you're gonna set your blind up, two other factors, and one is wind. Here, we have normally a wind from the northwest or west westerly winds. That's normally what I get during the hunting seasons. So for that reason, it won't be a problem for me because the wind will be blowing sort of across us this way up toward the house there, the direction that I came from. The deer aren't going to be up there. The deer aren't coming from that way. They're coming from the bedding area out there, coming from the bedding area down the hill. They do that. Fantastic. The wind is sort of following them in here and they might crisscross that wind to come in here, but eventually they're going to end up on that apple tree and it would be really unlikely that they would go toward the house first and then come to the apple tree. That's not likely. So I should, and I have year after year that I've hunted here, had opportunities here. The wind is not a problem, but take that into account. What is your predominant wind where you are hunting? Another thing that we can't really control that we have to take into account is the sun. This is facing north. That's beautiful here in the Northern Hemisphere. Sun comes up behind me, sun sets over there, all season long, right? Moves up a little bit, but it's always this way. And the nice thing about that is, I'm gonna keep all the windows closed except for the north facing window, the one that faces the apple tree. That keeps all of the sunlight behind me to my back. It keeps me nice and dark in the blind, nice and shadows. You wanna be hiding in the shadows in that blind. Now over there behind the camera down over the hill in the well pad food plot, when I have a food plot in there, I don't have any food plots this year, but when I have a well pad food plot and that food plot is active, it's kind of harder to put a blind in there, but I like hunting out of a blind under. There's no real good tree access, but the blind when I was facing it westwardly, you have a problem with that, see, because the sun's coming right in there as the day gets, when it gets ready to set, it's coming right in the front of that blind and deer can pick you off, it's happened. For that reason, another important thing about blind hunting is we're not wearing camo in the blind. I mean, you can, I've done it, it works. But really what you want is a black stocking cap. You want a black face mask, maybe. You want black sweatshirts, maybe even black pants. What I like to call blind camo. <laughs> it's basically the camel that you would wear in a blind. It's nice and dark. Nice and dark clothes get in there. Some people go so far as to paint their faces the whole bit, and you can't go wrong with that. If you want to do that, go for it. If you're going to be switching between a blind when it's raining and a tree stand when it's not raining, just wear layers, right? Throw a black sweatshirt on over your clothes, carry a little face mask, a little black face mask right in your backpack. When you go back to the tree stand, take off the black sweatshirt, sit there in your camo. You know, you really want to go all out and get a black crossbow. <laughs> How do we protect the blind, make sure that it stays good season after season, stays comfortable to hunt in? Not too hard to do. There's a couple things you can do though. You can spray this down with UV protectant. You can buy these things. A lot of the things that you buy at like Dick's Sporting Goods store or Gander Mountain, the things that campers use for their tents, those same products will work on this material. Go ahead and buy something that works with like some kind of UV protectant. You can spray it on there. I don't because it's right here. It's not directly in the sunlight here, so it's not a problem. In addition to UV protectant, one of the things you can do is soak this with like a Kiwi water repellent spray you can soak it with that and it will help the material repel water even better. They do a pretty good job in my experience, but there is places where these things where the seams are sewed together and water can get in there and you will get a drip from now and then. Now and then it will start getting a drip inside the blind. I've had drips and stuff before. I don't worry about that stuff too much, but if really, if you want to protect these long term, go ahead and spray it with that stuff. The other thing I do to protect from water is don't set it up in a little dip and a little saddle. You want it kind of sitting up in the air a little bit so there's drainage around it. You don't want the water running through the bottom of the blind. I've never really had a problem with that, but that's something to take into account. Your zippers, you're going to want to take, when you're doing your zippers, 
some people like to put zipper lubricants on those and they do sell those on amazon.com you can look up a zipper lube and you can put that on there or you can take a scent free bar of soap the one that you use just take that and rub it over the zippers it'll lube those zippers a little bit better so they work the key with the zippers is don't force them i have found that they last a lot longer these steel bands through here those try to stretch the fabric and it's pulling the zipper apart trying to make it so it doesn't make it harder to do it so as you're going through here if you get to a tough spot with the zipper simply push this down and decrease the distance here it'll work a lot quicker if you do that you know if you're doing this and the zipper's catching just push it down like this works pretty slick that'll make your zippers last a lot longer another thing you'll notice about this blind is it doesn't have shoot through mesh right i've just got the windows set up with just regular windows and these windows don't uh they you can unzip them but there's no mesh behind it or anything like that i think there is mesh behind this if you really want to get picky you could go and unzip this guy and there's mesh behind that like a there's mesh there but that might work for ventilation something like that i do not shoot through the so-called shoot through mesh <laughs> i don't do it some people do and the company swear it's okay and i have taken a test shot or two back in the day it's been years where i was able to make decent accuracy that way it didn't seem to affect the accuracy but i'm still not going to do it i'm not going to shoot through the mesh so and i don't find a need to by putting the only the front window down you're keeping the light down on that blind so well that we don't have a problem with deer seeing us the mesh would not help with that some people like it because of the bugs but i would urge you to just to get a thermocell for your blind run a thermocell in there and with proper ventilation you're going to be all right with that right you can open up these windows a little bit you don't have to open them all the way but open the window crack to get ventilation going through there without letting in a lot of light and see if that helps you um that would be what i would do between that and the permethrin you should be okay as far as the bugs are concerned but i wouldn't try shooting through the mesh okay it says it's recording i am testing out the remote control for the tacticam the tacticam 5.0 wide that is set up right there on the tripod shooting at me to get a picture of the blind from the outside now that i moved inside the blind that might replace my gopro style field cam that i've been using down the road here if it works if all goes well so what I've done is I've come inside the blind. I've got the Tacticam filming from out there and I'm sitting in here. Boy, we got no light in here. I'm gonna go ahead and for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna open up another window to get a little bit more light in here. And hopefully you can see me and it'll make sense what we're doing here. All right, that looks a little bit better. Basically, I'm inside the blind now. I'm gonna give you some tips about what we do on the inside of the blind. First thing is I'm sitting on a nice bench right here and you want a bench that is not too high. A lot of people get a camp chair and sit in it. If it works for you, that's great. I have found, in my experience though, that a lower bench, a nice heavy bench that doesn't rock, it doesn't shift or anything like that, it sort of settles into the dirt over time, I have found that that is the best tool for the job for me. The reason you want a lower bench is because if you're up too high sitting in a chair, you're gonna be stooping an awful lot. You're going to be stooping down to see under the front lip of the blind and that's really going to work your back over long periods of time i plan on sitting here all day long the weather is you're protected from the weather so make it so you can see here all day long sitting a little bit lower helps with that i'd rather have a nice view sitting up straight plus it's nice and long genevieve can sit on the side here on the end and she can film when the deer come in here she can film for me on opening day she's hoping to do that and i'm hoping she has a good time plenty of room for that even though this is a smaller blind this is the Ameristep doghouse blind and before I set this blind up I used a range finder to determine where I was going to put the blind very important that you do that and you range find from your seat the same way you're going to be doing when you're sitting here when you're hunting so I use the range finder I've got myself a 25 yard shot where those apples are most likely to be set piling up right where they fall off the tree 25 yard shot and that hopefully is where the deer will be and that'll be a nice easy 25 yard shot if they're all the way to the trunk of the tree that's a 30 yard shot and that's fine if they are this side of the apples maybe it's a 20 yard shot but i can in my mind very quickly gauge that distance because i marked that ahead of time make this stuff easy set the blind up about 20 to 30 yards somewhere even 20 25 or 30 yards to the location where those deer are going to be 
And the other thing too, range find from the seat, not from where your crossbow is gonna be. You don't wanna start a yard off, a yard inaccurate right from the very beginning by starting someplace where the crossbow is gonna be. You wanna range find from where, stand and range find it from where you are gonna be, where your butt's gonna be. Same way you're doing it when you're sitting down in the blind hunting. Now I have a handful of these benches I made out of scraps. They've got treated lumber legs, I angled the legs a little bit, threw them together with scraps. Big old slab of button ball for a seat. That works great because it's nice and heavy, nice and dense. And I got two or three of these different ones to use in different blinds. This is the Margaret that I will introduce you to. I've actually introduced you to it before. It's a bench that I've used before. Genevieve named it after a character in a cartoon called Regular Show. We called it the Margaret for, it's like a, fancy lawn furniture name or something I don't know but it's name of a character in a cartoon called regular show so but it works really good and it'll work well for us it's the longest one I've got plus when she's not here I can set it up put my stuff right on here I can have my gear all set up here like I've got today I've got stuff on here today my notes my lens cap all that stuff in the future it will have a range finder my bag will be down here or whatever else the other thing I do, if you film your own hunts, you can set a tripod up here in the corner to straddle this, right? Two legs in the back, one leg in the front, doesn't get in your way. Stick the handle out this way in front of you so you can move it. Have the flip screen, flippy outy screen here so I can see it shooting like this because I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna be on the left-hand side and I'll shoot like this way the camera here. And you can do it ahead of time, get the camera up, ab up above. The camera's almost spying over your shoulder, over your right shoulder. That's the way I set it up. So that will work for you. Or you can play around with it ahead of time. Very important to do all of this ahead of time. Make sure you feel comfortable with it. Chest it out ahead of time. Make sure you got clearance, right? Your limbs aren't gonna hit the corners. Make sure that you're gonna be able to shoot over the front of the window and all that stuff. Just test it ahead of time, you know sitting here, make sure you feel comfortable while you're waiting for deer to show up. The difference between a blind and a tree stand is I can sit here and move around all day long, read magazines, everything else, but I can also lift up the, you know, practice getting ready, practice waiting for the deer to come in. Am I going to be able to shoot over here? Am I able, going to be able to shoot over there? That sort of thing. I shoot off my knee in a blind. Some guys will bring a the Caldwell Deadshot Field Pod, for example, set that up ahead of time. You want to do that, more power to you. That's not a problem. For me, that is an extra piece of gear I don't want to bring in here. But if you want to do that, by all means, go ahead and do it. And if you feel comfortable leaving it in your blind overnight, go ahead and do that. I actually leave these tripods in the blind. <laughs> Thought I heard something. Genevieve's out there looking for bones again, going around looking for neat artifacts in the woods so she's wandering around while i'm doing this i actually have bought a dozen of these cheapo tripods from walmart over the years they're nothing fancy but they do the job and i feel comfortable leaving them in a blind all season long they do rust they do eventually break they're not the toughest things in the world but i don't feel like it's too bad when they're like 20 bucks and if i get two seasons out of it that's pretty good so i'm pretty happy with that but you can look at doing that as well. You can carry your tripod in and out if you want to do that. That's not a problem. And another question I get, and this is a good question, and it's funny I don't think of these things, but I've had questions from new people who are new to hunting. When do I cock my crossbow? Well, in all the hunting situations, the beauty of the crossbow is this. You don't cock it in the presence of the deer. You don't wait for the deer to show up to cock your crossbow. You cock it when you are ready to hunt. And that typically is the last thing that I do when I'm in a tree stand or if I'm in a blind, doesn't make any difference. When I get all set up, the cameras are set up, the bag is where it needs to be. I have stopped sweating, I've calmed down and I've wiped my face down with scent free wipes, sprayed the back of my neck, my gear, my armpits with scent free spray, whatever I've done to make sure I'm, I'm all calm, everything's ready to go. Then and only then I put an arrow in. Now on a tree stand, I will have hoisted it up, cocked. That's fine as long as it's on safety and everything else. But in a blind, I typically will cock it outside the blind, bring it in here and set it up, but I don't put an arrow in until I'm ready to hunt, until everything else is ready. Now I'm ready to just sit here and enjoy the day with an arrow in. So the arrow, I'm ready to hunt. On safe, but ready to hunt all day long. When the deer comes in, then I will raise it up, get comfortable, get the crossbow on my knee, I shoot off my knee and I just feel, and I feel comfortable about it. I've done it time after time and I feel as good that way as I do on a rest, really. I just use the rest for sighting in. But I will get it all ready to go. I will have that crossbow ready to go, ease the trigger up and make a shot when, I'm, when the time comes. 
but I cock it way ahead of time. You don't cock it. Cock it out to the blind where it's nice and comfortable. Get it in here on safety and don't put an arrow in until everything else is taken care of and you're ready to hunt. They come with rinky dink little wire stakes to put in there and they'll work in a pinch, but buy yourself some really good tent stakes. And if you do, buy the ones with the orange heads, the orange plastic parts. And that way when you put them in the ground, you can see them. Deer, that's not gonna bother any animals, nothing like that. But you put them in there and that way you can see where they are. These are a lot easier to get in and out too, especially when the ground freezes. One other little thing, my hat goes off to a Maristep for realizing the error of their ways. Hunting companies need to stay away from blue. It's like the one color that deer can see clearly. And this logo on the older models used to be this bright blue. It was kind of, kind of awkward. I'm like, don't you know better than that? Excalibur uses blue on certain parts of their new crossbows. Why would you do that? I know it's a little part and nobody's gonna see it or whatever, but come on, man. That's what orange is for. Well, I hope you found some good tips in there. And if you have other tips to share with other crossbow hunters, leave us a comment in the bottom. And let us know what your tips are for crossbow hunters hunting out of a blind. And I really hope that your crossbow season is shaping up. I am, by the time you watch this video, I will be sitting in a tree stand in Maryland and hopefully updating folks on the Facebook page about our successes here. Might even update you on YouTube. How's that? And out here, I'm going to pitch a camera here before I go back to the house, get that set up and see if we have any activity. So in the coming weeks, I will have information there to share with you as well. And we'll see how this little spot's going to shape up. I don't know. That tree's got a lot of years under its belt. The deer have been coming in here an awful lot for that tree. And I'm hoping we can hold it together. I'm hoping it's going to be okay going forward, but we're going to find out, right? So thank you for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. Until next time, all hail Bungie and all hail the 100-year-old apple tree. <laughs>